All right, so section 6.2, we're gonna talk about solving exponential equations and exponential in inequalities, okay? So let's start with solving equations. Um, we're gonna solve a lot of different types of equations, and in this section, or this chapter, you're gonna to want to get comfortable with many different um, methods, okay? So that by the end of the chapter, in like section nine, where we kind of everything gets put together, you um, can take a problem and see what the best method is going to be to solve it right so 2 to the x equals 8 cubed the method that we're going to rely on here is this idea that if i have 2 to the x just as an example equal to 2 to the y let's say then x and y have to be equal to each other all right so right here i can't i'm kind of stuck because i can't get rid of the x i can't take the x root of both sides for example right this is different than if it was x squared this is a much harder problem in the sense that we just haven't dealt with a problem like this before not that it's difficult on its own in its own right but just that we haven't seen or dealt with something like this and our typical tools that we've used previously aren't going to work so the first method we're going to use to attack something like this is try to write each side with the same base. So then we can set the exponents equal to each other. So here's what I mean. If I can write the left-hand side, two to the x, that's not gonna change. But if I can write eight as a base, um, as an exponential with a base two, then um, I can solve this. So eight, it turns out, is two to the third power. And that entire expression is to the third power, right? So what I end up with is two to the x on the left and two to the, power to a power we multiply, so 2 to the 9. And so then that must mean that 9, or sorry, that x equals 9. Now this one didn't require any math afterwards, but sometimes you will have to solve like an equation. So if this was like 4x and then 9 on the right, you'd have 4x equals 9, you'd have to solve that. Um, but for that one, that's all we need to do. Just um, get x equals 9 on that by making the bases match. Sometimes you won't recognize immediately what the base what the base needs to be turned to. Um, so you might have to play around with it, especially if it's a fraction, um, you know, figuring out what um, exponent the base needs to be raised to. All right, let's do one that's a little bit more complicated. You should pause, try this one, and then play the video to see how you do. So uh, for this one, I'm going to look for a base three on both sides. This one is already a base three, so that one's fine. This one though, I'm gonna write nine is three squared, so it'd be three, squared and up here I've still got 2x minus 1 and so since I have the bases are the same I can write this equation 2 times 2x plus 1 is equal to 6x and then I can just solve that equation on its own so this would be 4x plus 2 is equal to 6x subtract 4x from both sides I get 2 is equal to 2x divide by 2 and I get x is equal to 1 okay so most of these equations, that's going to be, in this section, that's going to be the method that we use. All right, let's do a word problem here. Kristen starts an experiment with 7,500 bacteria cells. After four hours, there are 23,000 cells. We want a function, an exponential function, that could be used to model the number of bacteria after X hours if the number of bacteria changes at the same rate. So yesterday, or um, in the previous video, you know, when you're watching this, we learned that the formula for exponential growth is a capital a equals little a times one plus r to the t all right and in this we know two things we know the initial amount because uh, the initial amount is 7500 so there's our a and then we also know that after four hours there are 23,000 cells so we know what that capital a equals um 23000 when t is four Okay, so we're going to use that to set up an equation and solve for r, because notice that's what's missing. We don't know what the growth rate is. So I plug in 23,000 here. Little a I know is 7,500. 1 plus r, I don't know what r is, and t is 4, because again, I'm plugging in 4 for t and 23,000 for a. Let me zoom in a little bit here see that better all right now the first thing I'm gonna to do to solve for R is divide by 7500 and I'll show you how I'm gonna do this in Desmos here so bring up Desmos so I'm gonna take 23000 divide that by 7500 hopefully I get a nice number um, 
it is three point. <laughs> it's not that nice. Um, I think it's one twelve, isn't it? No, it's not. Doesn't matter. All right, so I get three point zero seven over here on the left. That's equal to one plus r to the fourth. So then I'm going to take the fourth root of both sides. Um, so fourth root here, fourth root here. And so if I take, and what I'm going to do in Desmos is just take, I think, I can copy this number and I'll take the fourth root. So um, like I mentioned the other day when we were learning about roots, take this nth root, put in a four, paste the number in there. Maybe I can't paste it. I guess I can't. I'll just type it 3.0. 6666666 and then you end up with um, 1 plus r is equal to 1.32 and when you minus 1 you get that r is equal to 0.32 okay so now that we have r we can set up our model our model will be this a equals the initial amount which is 7500 times 1 plus r which is um, 0.32 raised to the, and then it said to use x, so we're going to put x up here for time, okay? And then the question is, how many bacteria will there be after 12 hours? So that means that we want to put in 12 for x. So a equals 7,500 times 1, this will be 1.32, so 1.32 raised to the um, 12. And we can just do that in Desmos. So we will go 7,500 times 1.32 raised to the 12, which should be a pretty big number. So it's 209,869 bacteria. Okay, so now we're going to kind of shift gears to a different kind of exponential um, growth um, situation, which is compound interest. All right, so here's our compound interest formula. And in this formula, so compound interest comes up anytime money is invested in some sort of account um, where there's an interest rate where the, um, that dictates how, how fast or the rate at which the um, money is going to grow, okay? So in this formula, P is the principal. Okay, that's how much money you invest initially. R is the interest rate. N is the number of times you compound. And then T is time, which is in years. Okay. So let's take an example here and see how this formula works. An investment account pays 4.2% annual interest compounded monthly. Okay, so if it's compounded monthly, and by the way, this N is the number of times it's compounded per year. Okay, so this is per year. All right, so if it's compounded monthly, it's compounded 12 times per year. Here is our interest rate at 4.2%. $2,500 invested, so that's the P, the principal. And then we want to know how much is in there after 15 years. So there's our time right there. And by the way, A over here just means final amount. Okay. So here's how we're going to compute that. A is equal to the principal, which is 2,500, times 1 plus r over n. So 1 plus r, which is 0 0.042. Don't put that in as a percentage. Convert it to a decimal. 0 0.042 divided by n, which was 12, all raised to the 12 times t, which is 15. Now, the cool thing, while well, your graphing calculator, you can put this in all in one expression. Um, but the nice thing about Desmos is you can type it in and it will format it exactly in the kind of math type um, that you would expect um, or that matches with the way you'd write it. Okay, so let's type this in now. This would be 2500. I don't know why. I need to focus lock here. Okay, so 2500 times in parentheses 1 plus. 0 0.042 divided by um, 12 and that's going to be all raised to the 12 times 15 and again that's oops uh, we are gonna have to use parentheses I guess so parentheses 12 times 15 
And that's the nice thing about decimals, like I said, is it looks exactly like it does the way you'd write it. You end up with four thousand six hundred eighty-eight dollars um, left in the or in the account. Okay, so four six eight eight point eight six, and that's money. All right, so there we go. Last type of problem. We're not going to need this graph over here, so I'm not sure why I left it on there. Um, we're going to solve this exponential inequality. The way we're going to solve an exponential inequality is very similar to the way we'd solve an exponential equation. The only tool that we really have in our toolkit at this point is getting the basis to match with the same power, or um, getting the basis to match. In other words, turning each side into a power with the same base. So if I look at 16 and 8, the only way we're going to be able to make those be the same base um, is if we use a base 2. So 16 is 2 to the 4, and that 2x minus 3 is still up there. That's going to be less than 8 is 2 to the 3. Okay, So then I'm just going to take the exponents and set them equal to each other. So I'll take this guy right here and that guy right there, and set them equal to each other. So I have 4 times 2x minus 3 less than 3 and then solve. So this would be 8x minus 3 is less than 3. Sorry, minus 12. Shoot, minus 12. I have to distribute in both spots there. So minus 12. And then if I add 12 over, I'll get 8x is less than um, 15. And then I'm going to divide by 8. And so I end up with my answer as x is less than 15 over 8. Okay, And that's my final answer for the inequality. Right. And you could graph that on a number line if you wanted. We don't, I don't think we need to do that. When you get down to the inequality, there's, that's pretty much your answer. There's nothing to check at this in this type of problem because there's no number you can plug in for x that would create an error. So that's your answer. Very similar to solving equations. And that, I think, wraps up section 6.2.